Well, my pleasing little puppets. Oh, yes, butter my crumpets. Let's get straight into a book. No dilly-dallying about. I've got a cracker lined up. A cracker. And it's called Allergic Alpaca. <laughs> yes, indeed. And it's written by Kaya Thomas and Connor Brecken. Brecken. Brecon. Brecken. Hopefully I got one of those pronunciations pr pr pronunciations correct <laughs> unlike the word pronunciation right let's get into it shall we allergic alpaca i'm a bit of an allergic alpaca in the springtime i tell you what okay here we go Ooh. alpaca loved living at the start of the alphabet <laughs> except for one thing <laughs> she was allergic to apples. Runny nose, sore head, red spots. If Alpaca even touched an apple, she was in trouble. <laughs> Woe is me. Everyone else from A adored the apples, so Alpaca had never told them. She just avoided the apple tree and put up with the sneezes. Hmm. Until the day Antelope decided to try archery. <laughs> Go, Antelope! called the ants. Antelope stepped up to the line, pulled back his bow, and... The arrow flew straight past the target and into the apple tree. Oh, I'll, I'll get it down, called Ape, shaking the tree. What? cried alpaca but it was too late <laughs> apples were falling and tumbling bouncing their way toward her <sighs> alpaca ran as fast as she could jumping ducking and weaving she turned to look behind her and that's when it happened. Oh, the suspense! An avalanche, bam, crashing down, eee, falling gently harder. Ice, jumper, kite, lantern, mountain, nearly off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Page, quick, right, spinning, tumbling, unexpected view. Do you see what's going on here? <laughs> Whoomph! Alpaca landed in W with a thud. An apple hit the ground beside her. Great! Thought Alpaca. She said, Bless you, said Walrus. Alpaca glared at the apple, then sent it flying. Push! <whistles> Alpaca. 
Packer tried climbing back up to A, but it was no use. The edge was much too slippery. How was she going to get back home? Zebra had visited once, arriving on the strange red line in the sky. Huh, a zip line, he had called it. It wasn't far to Zed. Perhaps she could try that. Hmm. With a shrug and a sigh, <sighs> Alpaca started walking, slowly at first, but gradually getting quicker and bouncier. By the time Alpaca reached Zebra, she felt incredible. Oh, clear nose, good head, no red spots. She felt so good that it got her thinking. Hmm. Should she move away from the apples? Away from her friends? When she landed back at the beginning, the others crowded around her. Oh, alpaca, they said. You look amazing. And that's when Alpaca told them. It's being away from the apples, she said. I'm allergic to them. We'll, we'll, we'll chop down the tree, cried Ape. But Alpaca wouldn't let them. It's not fair to chop it down for me, she said. I will move. The alphabet won't be the same with you in a different spot, said the ants. And then another voice joined them. Excuse me, said Whale. I'm sorry to interrupt, but did this come from here? Oh, it did, said Alpaca sadly. See what he's bought with him? Oh, yes. A little apple. Might I trouble you for a few more? Asked Whale. It was the most delicious thing I've ever eaten. Ape looked at the ants. The ants looked at antelope. An antelope looked at alpaca. Then they smiled. <sighs> alpaca loved living at the start of the alphabet. Clear nose, good head, no red spots. And if anyone ever missed the tree, Wapples were only an avalanche away. <laughs> Wapples. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Wapples. I rather like that. Apples from now on in Mrs. Nesbitt's world will be called Wapples. <laughs> in fact, I have some Wapples in the crisper in my refrigerator. Onward and upward, I think I'm going to have a Wapple now. <laughs> Until next time, my little puppets. Bye-bye.